Hi everyone, welcome to Wandering DMs. I'm Paul. And I'm Dan, and on this very special episode of Wandering DMs, we're on our 4th of July holiday, and we are wandering me to another city, <laughs> Paul to another room, and what we're going to be doing today, and we just came up with uh, uh, recently actually for an idea, is we are going to be unboxing, uh, for the first time ever, the 1975 game War of Wizards, and are we not? We're not only unboxing it for the first time, but it is Gary Gygax's personal copy that Paul acquired some time ago. Uh, so all that and more today on Wandering the Evs. <laughs> Before we get into that, um, this time because it is a special episode, there will not be an after party chat. So sorry everyone about that. Um, but normally there is at the end of the show after party chat. Uh, in the future, if you want to check that out, uh, uh, check out our Patreon at patreoncom DMs. Yeah, and uh, we're also getting started a little bit early today. Uh, kind of standard push pull here on Wandering DMs <laughs> is we have other events this afternoon, and one of us eh, really <laughs> wanted to try to get the full game in. So if you're joining us uh, after the unboxing and during the play, feel free to um, check out the archive on YouTube, and um, hopefully we'll see how far we get. I don't know. We have no idea. We've yeah. never we've never engaged with uh, this game before ever. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Julie is mentioning to us, um, yeah, that the, because we're we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants here. The YouTube title says something weird about about mm. being a full of radiance episode, which Got is clearly it. not correct. Um, but uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll fix it in post. We'll be fine. We'll fix it in post, <laughs> indeed. Uh, Thanks for looking at that. Let me make sure, Dan, that I'm here, that I've got everything set up here to yeah. monitor the chat. Yes, so yes. If folks want to chime in. Uh, we can we can respond. Uh, in the meantime, um, tell us tell us what you know about War of Wizards. You know, I tell you, not very much. Uh, let me pull up. I've been intrigued by this game. I've seen the box in the past. Let me pull up uh, a Wikipedia article here, kind of briefly. So uh, what I'm told is War of Wizards is a board game published by TSR, the makers of D&D, in 1975. That would be just one year after D&D was published. It was TSR's first publication for M.A.R. Barker's World of Tecumel. So this game is set in Tecumel, and it came out prior to Empire of the Petal Throne for that very famous campaign setting. And this actually is the first Tecumel publication in history. Um, I'm seeing here, uh, it was, uh, it's been reprinted uh, since. Uh, it does predate TSR releasing Empire of the Petal Throne by a few months. Um, uh, reception, Colin Wheeler, reviewed War of Wizards for White Dwarf number 8. And Colin stated that all in all, War of Wizards is an enjoyable game and can be played in a good evening session. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Hopefully it can be played in a uh, one or 90 minute... Uh, <laughs> Afternoon stream. <laughs> stream. <laughs> right? All right. So, um, oh, have I already flipped us to this? I don't think I meant to do that, but oh well. Um, so... Um, Sorry, everyone. Uh, tech is tech is uh, it was set up ten minutes ago. So. <laughs> um, Tell us a little bit about yeah. how you acquired it, Paul. Yeah, for sure. So, um, as, as some of you may know, but around 2010, I think, um, uh, you know, a, a little while after Gary passed, uh, there was an auction of all of his uh, his vast game collection, um, and I bid on a couple of things on that just just for just for giggles. Um, I bought a couple of things. This one, I didn't know anything about it. It didn't look like there was a lot of action happening on the on the auction, and I thought it would be a clever thing to have as a as a collectible. Um, so I ne really never envisioned actually playing the thing. It was just going to sit on the <laughs> shelf and be a collectible. Uh, but now we're going to ruin that by cracking it open. So it's still in the shrink wrap. So clearly Gary never opened it. Yeah. Uh, just sat in his closet for years and years. Yep. Yep. Um, and sat in your closet for years and, and years since you got it. Sat in my closet for for a good. <laughs> A good decade plus. Uh, as you can see here, we have the certificate of authenticity. Uh, let's see, signed by Gail Gygax and Paul Stormberg. Yep. Uh, so you can see this is this is definitely legit. And uh, you're all going to watch us live uh, ruin the collectability of this game. So, <laughs> thanks to uh, uh, Gary for keeping this around his collection. Thanks to Paul for getting it. Thanks to Paul Stormberg for certifying this is the copy out of Gary Gygax's collection. And Paul, I gotta say, I'm totally honored that you're willing to open up, and it's a two-player game. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm personally honored that you're willing to break the shrink wrap up on this and play it with me, because I've, I've seen this in the past, I've kind of been curious about it. I, you know, oddly, I actually run 
you know, D&D &D Wizards competitions kind of like this idea, and I kind of use sort of the same name for the, for the events. Great. So thank you so much for uh, being willing to share this with me. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Like, yeah, I don't know. Games are meant to be played, in my opinion. So let's 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 get this thing open. So, um, all right. Without further ado, let's let's break the shrink wrap. <laughs> You're the man. You're the man. Okay. Wow. Been, been in this shrink wrap since 1975. Here it goes. Waiting for us to do this. I, and Dan and I have no idea what we're getting into here. We we, when we were setting up the cameras, we were like, how big of a space is it going to need? Who knows? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do... Do people do this? See, I don't actually watch unboxing events. <laughs> so I'm going to be really weird about this. Is I'm going to open it up. I'm going to smell the inside. <laughs> Which is what I usually do with these things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff. <laughs> I yeah. see got a little plastic baggie with two D10s, and they're pre-inked. I'm shocked to see yeah. they're pre-inked. I love this, right? And so to be clear, they are dodecahedrons, right? This is old school percentile dice yeah. that we're working with. Is they are 20 sides, but they are <laughs> 0 to 9 printed twice. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So this is what I personally grew up with for percentile dice. This is what percentile dice should be. They are platonic solids. All right, I'm, I'm rolling them for the first time ever. Got okay, it. we got to decide which one comes first. So probably the, the red die comes first. Oh, yeah. Okay, the red right, die is right. the tens place. Right, so 54. 54. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. So I think that these, these plastic dice, I think if, like, you know, if you follow John Peterson's book, I think these get worn down pretty quickly. So the, I'm, I'm unused, in this day and age, I'm unused to seeing these type of dice uh, yeah. with pristine edges. <laughs> right? That's fantastic. I got a 14. Okay. All right, next, next item in the box here is that we have a little uh, very handmade-looking card, probably made on somebody's typewriter, that says, uh, For the gamer who enjoyed the Grenadier TSR gaming figures, interested in the added dimension of metal gaming figures? For a complete catalog of Grenadier products, fill out this postcard and mail. Your free catalog will arrive in one week. Should we fill this out? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, after, maybe after the stream we can do that. Now I'm looking forward to that catalog. Now, speaking of which, I'm going yeah. to cheat here. I'm going to skip yeah, yeah. ahead because down in the bottom here, yeah. look at this. We have oh. four metal figures. Oh. They're, they're on a single sprue. Yeah, so yeah, have yeah. To clip them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Uh, looks actually like two copies of two of the... Like two of one and two oh, of the yeah, other. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Figures. Totally. They're very small. They're extremely small. What are those? Are those Would you call those 10 millimeter size? Those are, those are probably 10 millimeter. Yeah. 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 yeah, 10 or maybe 15. Got it. Got it. So probably not something you could swap into your normal D&D game. Hmm. Un unless, you, unless they're Hobbit wizards. I right? mean, they're do, halfling wizards. Do I, do I need to go get clippers or something to, to mount these guys? Or, <laughs> yes. Or should I? <laughs> It's up to you. It's experience. up to you. You're asking the wrong guy. You know what? Ask the, ask the viewers, Paul. All right. Should viewers, we should we should, we should we should we should we clip them out? Should we to make the extra effort here to actually clip out and use these tiny little metal figures? Um, okay. Let's sit on the we'll side pending. Time. Okay. Pending. Here call. we have here we have an enormous rule book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I knew this. This is the one thing I knew about this is page count. <laughs> bring this up here so yeah um wow that's small oh it's stamp. very small print that's <laughs> <laughs> oh my god right that right is, this 75 is, this is yep yep oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay well Ruh -roh. it's 24 pages long um hey look we got a blank Use page it. for notes that's, okay that's all right okay <laughs> one less page to wow that is a you know two column very small <laughs> <laughs> like some standard, you know, some old school D&D art, some old school Tecumel art pieces, just a couple. All right, I'm going to hand this off to you, Dan. We're going to yeah. look at what else is in here. Okay. Um, okay, so this is, I'm guessing, our actual game board. Right. Which is just two, two pages. It's an interesting texture on this piece of paper. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got some nice artwork. Cool. Yeah, and then... Okay. So I think my the one thing I know about this, I think you're going to have wizard here, wizard here, and there's 20 spaces between you. And I believe that the spells move across the board. Okay. So as, as, you push, as you push magic towards your opposing wizard. And then we've got two uh, two big boards of chits, which I'm going, yeah. to, I'm going to start popping out. Okay. So. so I'm going to try to I'm going to try to summarize. I'm going to try to parse. 
I do not have chat GPT available uh, to push this through. So uh, there is a forward by Gary Gygax. So Gary Gygax listed as Tactical Studies Rules Editor, uh, 1st of May, 1975. Uh, the game you have in hand is unique. It is a contest for two players, but it is far more than that. Cool. Okay, introduction. Uh, setting here, uh, for, those of, uh, for those who have read the works of writers such as Howard, Tokine, Lieber, Kurtz, Vance, Moorcock, oh my God, that's a long list, and others, uh, the game it's will require... GM appendix N right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. So it portrays the final showdown between two great sorcerers. Uh, two men who face one another across space some 30 paces long and 10 wide. Boy, that's... It's like a football field? Is that what you're saying? Um, attacking, defending with all their powers. Okay. Now, okay, so... I, I guess I'm, I'm going to feel bad if I just very mm. briefly is so we, we know that M.A.R. Barker right the maker of this game is highly problematic uh, for what it's worth this game was made several decades before he went totally crazy um, we, we talked about that feel free to look at our prior um, show with uh, James Malajewski, uh where we discussed that so we're going to focus on the game here problematic artists <clears throat> okay so we have a set of rules a game board <laughs> Die cut counters, 20 sided percentile dice, four miniatures. We need several pairs of six sided dice. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, I'll get those. Sorry, I'm still struggling. Not eight sided get, dice, Paul. Get, get some chits out. Yeah. <laughs> not, not eight sided? Not eight, no eight siders, but a large supply of six siders. A large supply. Und Which, undetermined number correct. of six siders. Okay. I have As three. In, no dangling chads. Okay. Wow, you're fast at that. Uh, and and turn record sheets modeled on the sample supplied with these rules. Huh? Turn when? record sheets? Oh, gosh. Oh, shit. Well, Dan, there is a printer on the shelf behind yeah. us that has a photocopy. Yeah. <laughs> we need that. Yeah. Um, you know, or, or we have little pads of paper here that we can use if that's... Okay, so you need... Oh, no. There's, there's... Oh, no. Look at this. Already... I've got uh, oh, I've got a chit where the paper is coming free of the cardboard. That's do you have well, glue? <laughs> <laughs> do you have paste? <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to find some. Yeah, I guess 1975 cardboard is uh, you know. Yeah, I think we will have to photocopy that page twice actually. Okay. So whenever you're ready, I'll let you do that because you know how to run this thing. Sure, thing. sure, sure, sure. <laughs> So yeah, bear with us, everyone. I mean, this is a weird live show. It is There's probably yes. going to be some gaps and stalls right. as we, you yeah. know, read text yeah. and find glue, yeah. And yeah. other such things. Okay, so William's saying, uh, leave the uh, miniatures on the sprue, swap in other miniatures that you have. Yeah, good call. Yeah, I like it. Right. Okay, uh, okay, character types. <clears throat> this is great. So we're going to be making some decisions as you. Punch chits. Okay. So players, and this is surprising, players may be either a priest or a sorcerer. The former, the priest, has certain special defensive spells and can wear armor, while the latter has a few extra offensive spells, but is forbidden by his arts from wearing armor. A priest carries a mace, and a sorcerer has a dagger. Fascinating. Yeah, right? Fascinating. So I, knowing your proclivities, Anna, I'm assuming you will want to play the priest. <laughs> Hell no, Paul. <laughs> no, no priests. This is this is a fact, folks. For those who don't know, Dan Collins, despite the fact of completely removing clerics from all of his D and D games, actually loves playing them. <laughs> Plays them all the time whenever there's an option to do so. What? You've outed me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you probably be no for 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 the stream purposes. I'm going to play the sorcerer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want? Which is why I guess they have duplicate miniatures. Right. Right. So you right. Have two two uh, priests and two sorcerers. Yeah, I don't know. Sense. Well, should we do sorcerer versus sorcerer? I, or do you want to exercise the full scope of the rules by doing, uh, hmm. you know, one of each? Oh. Hmm. I, I would have said one of each, but which, yeah, is it, is it one of each too? Yeah. Even though it, it, it's maybe making it more challenging yeah. for us to process that many rules. Okay, let's let's pretend we're. I mean, so at so, somebody, I guess, online claimed that maybe this could uh, this could be used as an extension to your D and D game. Mm -hmm. So let's pretend that we're playing an OED style D and D game, and there aren't any priests. Okay, how about that? All right. Okay, and we can we can add priests later on if we want to. Okay. Great. Okay, so just just sorcerers. 
Uh, each player is going to secretly roll percentile dice six times to determine the following. Two rolls for physical power, two for attack strength, and two for defense strength, making a possible total of 600 points in all. Okay, so you have th basically have three abilities, right? Mm -hmm. And you roll the percentile dice twice, add them together. Okay. Right, so two times D100 for and your you ability. Is it secret and we have to trust each other not to cheat? Uh, yeah. Okay. They may be witnessed by a referee <laughs> in the interests of general amity. <laughs> We're gonna have to use the viewers. Yeah, precisely. As our yes. Exactly. Oh goodness. An enjoyable variation is to have the referee roll the dice for both players and keep all records secret, informing each player only when he has exhausted a particular strength category and must transfer points into it. See below. This adds greater realism, since then neither combatant knows exactly what the limits of their power are. You know, I will point out that in original D&D, in Volume 1, it does say the referee is supposed to roll the ability scores for the characters. Uh -huh. So this is sort of in That's echoes funny. that a little bit. I can't help then, as I'm popping out these chits, to note that um, basically what I'm seeing on them is one large number mm -hmm. and then some in minuscule text that I can't read at all. Right. Above, okay. below that number so I hope it's not important it's totally going to be important isn't it so are they all monsters no are they no no i see undead okay okay beast. okay so at the top of the counter insect <laughs> where's the what camera's currently active okay so paul's looking at is that visible there that's, that's so funny. paul's looking at Shits yeah. that look like this, right? Yeah, like except that. that they're not nearly as clear as the <laughs> lovely picture that you're all seeing on the camera. So they're, this is this is not for, this is made for your young gamers with strong eyes. <laughs> you're seeing you're seeing me deal with it here today. Okay, so just to tell you, Paul, that at the top is the name of the spell. Okay. Right. So I believe these are all spells. Do we care about the one row of blank chits? Probably is not. That, is that a thing? Okay. Probably not. I, I don't know. Okay, so at the top, you've got the name of the spell. Mm -hmm. In the middle, you've got the spell's number. I assume an index, okay. I guess, into a catalog. At the bottom left, you've got spell cost. Wow. So I see something like 16 minus 20 plus 1 on the chit. Here, I'm going to give you an actual chit to yeah, compare thank to. You. There you go. Got it. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, certainly, I certainly need to look at it very closely. Yeah, so this one here is the spell name is Telic. Probably telekinesis. Uh, index number is three. The cost is one dash five. And the bottom right is the movement factor of the spell, which could be like three or could be three dash four. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh geez. Stan, here's your here's your <laughs> There's so many that's spilling everywhere. There are too many. I... There are too many. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. So some of the spells are creatures, okay? So if, the, if you get a creature, there's an additional number for their hit dice. Oh, man. There are so many chits. Now, remember that, that Tecumel was based on original D&D, right? So Empire of the Petal Throne, which some people say is its own role-playing game, did take, you know, did was founded with standard D&D rules. So there's a lot... It looks like the same spell names to me, largely. All right, Dan, I'm going to leave you alone on the stream for a minute here because yep, i got yep. to go find several things. Yes. i got to find miniatures. i got to find some glue for this broken chit. And uh, i got to find more cups to hold the vast array of chits. Power up the copier as you walk off, maybe? Oh, it's, it's on and ready. Oh, okay, okay, great. Okay, so I'm doing more. <laughs> this, is, this is the best... This is the best wandering DM stream ever. While Dan is on screen alone, just reading rules from seventy-five. Wonderful. Okay. So okay. So uh, so remember, we're going to be rolling percentile dice for three ability categories: uh, physical power, attack strength, defense strength. And then they go through. And what what do these separate things do? So physical power represents a player's stamina and physical condition. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Interesting. If physical power falls below 20, you can only cast defensive spells. Interesting. Which I guess will get your strength back up. Okay. <clears throat> when physical power hits zero, you're defeated. That makes sense. Right. Attack strength. What? A maximum. Right, that makes sense. So a maximum 200 points. Yep. 
If one's attack points fall below the minimum required to cast a spell, he cannot cast it. That makes sense. Unless he transfers points into this category from his physical power category. So you can, you can, you can transfer points between your three abilities, Paul. <laughs> uh, right. As stated, transfer points. Got it. Uh, if he has excess points in defense, you can transfer those into physical power and then transfer those into attack strength. Okay. So it flows, the, you can transfer points from defense into physical and from physical into attack. And I guess that's it, apparently. Transfer points. At the beginning of your turn, you may electro transfer points from your physical category, okay, into either of the other two or from one of those into physical. Okay. I see. So physical is sort of the center point. You may not do both in the same turn. Got it. Transfer, enter on the turn sheet. Otherwise, transfer is invalid. Games of this time really cared about their record keeping sheets. I'm back, everyone. Hi. I got an extra cup for more chips. I got some glue. And, uh. <laughs> we thought we were kind of prepared for yeah, this. Yeah. I have here, uh, this is the oldest box of miniatures I own, which I never use. And this is going to be some real old, kind of 80s era Grenadier minis in here. Which feels appropriate to me. Great. So, uh, give me something oh, cool, man. man. No oh. priest. Oh, you want a priest? You, no, I don't. I don't want a priest. <laughs> <laughs> no clerics. <laughs> there you go, man. Great, thank you. <laughs> oh, you son of a. <laughs> the miniature for folks who can't see is clearly a priest. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got this guy. Uh, he's kind of wizardy. Great, yeah. Oh, oh, here's here's a wizard who used to hold a wand, but now the wand is great. broken off. Long oh, ago. oh, okay, all right, great. It ran out of charges. Yep. Great. Okay, that's that's feeling like a good good array. So each turn uh, represents thirty seconds. We're very careful with our scales here. Each turn represents thirty seconds of actual time. Uh, a turn is divided into the following phases. Okay, so uh, so pl player A goes and they number one transfer points. I'll tell you that later. Two spell casting, spell movement, and physical movement, if any, and then three combat, magical, which you can have spell versus spell combat. And then physical, if one player is in personal combat against the other. So we actually might wind up stabbing each other with daggers. Great. I hope that happens. Yeah. So I'm gluing this chit, uh, and I, I want to note that uh, um, Joshua has uh, noted in the chat here the very likely reality that yeah. we may need to organize these chits and have, be able to, like, select Let them me... rather than pull them randomly out of a bowl. Like, I've got them set up. Let okay. me jump okay. forward and try to determine that but i've got uh i've got my i've got my my one broken shit there so basically just put a little white glue on there to try and glue the paper back to the cardboard hopefully that's the only one that does this to me uh, now i'm now i'm proceeding to uh break out the blue chits dan uh offered to me at the beginning of this for those who are more careful with their with their toys uh the option of, of getting out a, a knife to carefully cut the chits free, which I declined. I do that sometimes because I to try to be nice to my chits, and then I wind up like slicing the wrong way, and it, I've made it worse sometimes yeah. to trying to do that. Yeah. What um, I will probably though, when we when we complete this game and put it away, I'll I'll dig up some plastic baggies to stick these chits in, so they don't we don't lose them and they're not just bouncing around in the box. That I will do. Oh my goodness. Ugh. 1975 cardboard. Oh boy, everybody. <laughs> Look at the check-in on the chat. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> I am unclear about how you select your spells. Can you just select <laughs> anything in the book at any time? Be curious. Has anyone in chat... Have any experience with this game? Heard of it? Played it? Seen it played? I uh, would love to know. Get, let us know. Um, not that we're going to completely lean on you to solve all our problems, but I'm just kind of curious if we are really... How, how out in the woods are we? 
<laughs> I'm guessing pretty far out. Uh, but this is the joy. This is, you know, uh, <laughs> when we were talking about this, uh, this came up because Dan saw the game sitting on my shelf and he was like, what's the, oh, isn't that, you know, what is that game? Is that a two-player game? We were looking for a two-player game. It is innately a two-player game. And I said, oh, well, that's not only, yes, a two-player game, but crazily it's this thing from the, um, from the auction of Gary Gygax's personal collection. Uh, William says it just looks like wizard football. And I kind of agree. Um, so anyway, I uh, came up with this wild idea of like, well, let's just stream ourselves unboxing this thing and trying to play it. Um, maybe that will be fun. Or maybe it will be tedious. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> if we land there. Um, and, then, and then, of course, I made the joke of the, the other item in my weird collection of ancient games that will probably never get played is a copy of um, Magic Realm, if anybody's ever seen that game. I've never played it. I own it. I've opened it. I looked at it and went, oh, dear God. Uh, I will never figure out how to play this game. I'm personally frightened by that game. I, that, <laughs> I open that box, and that, that actually frightens me. And I, I, I actually like in playing Advanced Bismarck, um, <laughs> if anybody knows what that is. And yet, nonetheless, I'm intimidated by, uh, by that game. Josh wants to know if we're going to be demonetized for saying chit too much. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, who's the art by? Who's the art? I, I, I want to say... Um, maybe Barker. Yeah, possibly so. Yeah, you're right. I can't... I don't see credits here and I can't recognize it myself. Yeah. So, okay, so as far as I can tell, you just pick any spell in the game. When you when it comes because I don't see any advanced selection here and I don't see any cast whatever you want whatever yeah you want. so so have complete knowledge of all the whatever one hundred spells in the game yep and be prepared yep <laughs> pull them out so when you cast a spell blah 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 spells cost varying amounts uh, within a given maximum minimum a player is free to expend as many points on the spell as you like. So if one chooses to send a spell listed as costing from 1 to 10 attack points, you may send it with 1 or 2 or 5, etc., up to 10. Okay. Um, and, that, and that is a resource that we have, the number of spell correct. points. So spells are in three categories, right? They're either attack or they're defense or they're attack defense. <laughs> they're either attack spells, defense spells, or attack defense spells. Okay. You have, again, your three ability pools, right? Yep are your physical power, which is like your hit points, basically. Okay. And then your attack strength and your defense strength. So you cast an attack spell, you're deducting from your attack strength points. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah. those other two stats are the points that power Correct. spells. That makes exactly. sense. And I assume they never come back, that, that you're just expending them. And So the very first thing in your turn is you can transfer points between the three pools. Oh, right. Now, every transfer must be from or to your physical points. Okay. That. Yep. So you can go from attack or defense into physical, or you can go from physical into one of the other ones. Gotcha. You only make one transfer per turn, yep. right? You can't go directly from attack to defense. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, again, physical points are like your points. Uh, you get down to zero, you're done. Uh, if you get those down to 20, you're prohibited from casting attack spells. Wait, say that again? If, you, if, you're hit, if your physical points get down to 20 or less, you can only cast defense spells. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe that'll never come up. <laughs> uh, spell costs. Attack defense spells may be sent. Okay, so the attack defense spells may be sent with points from either category, not both together. So if you have one of these attack defense combination spells, you can pick whichever pool you want. Okay. Cool. Spell damage. Spells do damage to the opponent when they reach him. That is, enter the square in which he stands. Uh, the damage varies according to the number of points invested in the spell. So if you spent seven points then the opponent suffers seven damage. Uh, these losses are always from the physical power, not from your casting pools. Yep. Uh, some spells and physical blows can be dodged. This depends on the dexterity of the combatant. Spell movement. One attack spell and one defense spell can be launched by a player during the spell movement segment of your turn phase. One attack and defense spell. Uh, one may also opt to, to, to skip one of those. Spells. Most spells move across the board towards the opponent. Certain spells have no movement factor. They are cast by the user directly on himself. Um, many spells have a fixed rate of movement. Yeah, advancing that many squares per turn. 
while a given spell may be blocked temporarily by opposing spells, no spell may ever cease forward motion uh, by choice. It's just going to move. You don't have any control over it at that point. Uh, Lord Pseudo commenting that didn't realize that the game was from 75, which, pre which predates Sutherland for the potential art. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Predates Tecumel. Te Tecumel, I'm going to say that wrong 17 times today. Yep, yep. Um, Right? This is literally the first publication mm -hmm. of this setting ever. Yep. And I'll say, on the outside of the box, it doesn't say anything about that. But once you get inside, uh, it starts to talk about it someplace. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, the, the author may be permitted to inject some background from his own personal world of fantasy. The Empire of Mighty Tazlianu, Land of the Petal Throne. As players of the author's Petal Throne know, every major city of this opulent tropical world contains an arena, the Hirolacte Arena, where men are pitted against men, beasts, and other creatures for the greater glory of their clans. Yeah. Hi, Desparrow. Yep, sorry, sorry that we did start a little early. Uh, Dan was eager to try and actually finish this game in the stream, and we have a hard stop today at 2 o'clock. So, uh, thought we'd get, get going. Tax bills. Uh, Brandon, you haven't missed much. We've opened the box. <laughs> uh, so again, catch you and anyone else just joining the stream up to date. What we're playing here is War of Wizards uh, from 1975, uh, written by M.A.R. Barker. We actually have uh, Gary Gygax's personal copy, uh, which I bought in the uh, auction after his death uh, around... 2010 was when the auction happened. And uh, and we've just busted this thing out of the shrink wrap. Just now. Live. On the internet. We have ruined the collectability of this game. <laughs> uh, which, I, which I, again, personally feel pretty honored by. Okay, spell list. Uh, I am very busily here breaking apart a million billion chits. While Dan's trying to read 25 pages of rules <laughs> as rapidly as possible. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, probably a foolish idea, but here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't really mind breaking uh, collectability of, of games, because games, you know, they, uh, if I published a game, I would want people to play it. I don't want them to leave it in a box wrapped up in plastic forever. That's dumb. <coughs> Okay, so again, uh, I am uh, so I've finished breaking apart these chits and I'm putting them into these little cups just to not lose track of them. Uh, I'm willing to bet that Josh is probably right that at some point I'm going to have to fish all these things out and line them up and sort them, and it's going to be incredibly painful. Uh, that's my guess. But there you go. There are two containers of blue chits. So, Dan, you said we had to photocopy a page out of the book. You want me to do that now? And that's, you're gonna have to vamp on the on on the stream for everybody while I do this. <sighs> that's a lot of rules. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I almost think we can get started. So so most of the rules are the various spell descriptions, right. and the spells sometimes cross reference other spells about things that they can block or defend against. Um, so I, I almost think we could start playing and just start throwing. And there's an right. index. Right. Maybe and you might maybe actually also copy that page that has an index of spells for both of us. Okay. Right. And we can look at that and just say, I want to try this spell. Hi everyone, look, my little camera now. I see. Okay, so the so the, yeah. the so the chits are all spells in two different colors for the two different players. And I, I, I also agree with Josh. Yep, thank you. I agree with Josh that we're just going to have to pick out, when we pick a spell, we got to find the counter for that spell. Woohoo! That's fun. Yeah. All right, so I have the combat table, uh, a whole lot of tables here, and the back page is a spell reference table. That one you're suggesting? Yes. We can use that as an index, of course. Let's see the damage over there. All right, there it is, A. Oh, a lot of record keeping in this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm pretty
projecting myself back in time here and thinking about what it was like to crack open this game when you bought it in 1975. Let me tell you, you probably didn't have a printer right. copier yes. behind you yeah. ready to go. Uh, so yeah. quite, li quite likely you'd take some ruled paper and start duplicating the structure by hand probably yeah. would be the yeah. first thing that happened. Like, like along about 1980, maybe there's a copier at your workplace you can you can steal. I'm gonna hand this to you. That's that's Great. your repaired shit. Thank you. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be the key, the one, right? That's gonna be the one that the, the game is gonna hinge on that. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when you ca so you can cast one attack and one defense spell. So the the combination spells, I guess, you can probably pick which category it's falling into. What kind, of, what kind of spells are attack and defense? It's these ones in the middle, attack defense spells. So like various creatures and the demon and wall of fire, wall of ice. Mm -hmm. uh, you see how those things might be both attack and defense. Fly and invisibility. That I'm a little unclear, but... Seeing other planes. Control of self. That's a great spell. I would like control of self, please. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Vapor of death. Oh my gosh, these spells have great names. Silver halo of soul stealing. Oh wow. Darts. Counter. So, so you notice that this second column, right? So there's the index on the left, and then the second column is the spells, the indice, the index of spells that it counters or defends against. Okay. Right. Oh, and the attack point cost on the right. Okay, Correct. And you just get to pick, right? When that, that attack point cost is a range, you just get to pick. Okay. I think I probably okay. said that. Oh, I'm still going to need my little pad of paper here to roll my stats, right? I'm going to roll my stats. Correct, that. yes. Okay, what are my three stats? Uh, 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 you, you see, uh, do you have a character sheet? Uh, is it this turn right sheet? Right. It's okay. these three things right there. You okay. see uh, uh, attack and defense and physical. Attack, defense, physical. Attack, defense, and physical. You're going to roll percentile twice for each. Do I want to actually fill in this first column? This first column? I, I, let's say yes. Great. Okay. I'm going to roll mine. I'm going to roll mine in secret. Fans not allowed to look, but uh, internet, you can keep me honest here. If you can even see that. Look at Oh my gosh! Um, this is this is my attack score. Let's see if I can get this up on camera. Uh, can you guys see that? Can you guys see that? I don't know. Maybe. maybe. So remember, if the red the red die comes first. I know. Right? I know. If it's like zero five, that's five. If it's zero zero, that's a hundred. I I can't. You know, obviously, you have no. There's the probability of that happening is too low. So we don't really worry about that. Uh, get this out there can you guys see that that is the number that i rolled for attack uh cool cool i'm pretty i'm pretty pleased with that that roll uh okay i'm gonna try defense now here we go okay and physical yeah lord Sudo, you got it right yeah Okay, I'm going to see if I can get this onto camera somewhere. So, okay, there we go. There, there are the stats that I've just rolled for myself. Cool. All right. I'm good. I'm going to put those in my first row of my record sheet. Wacky. I don't see how we're going to possibly be able to keep the secret from each other sitting right next to each other like this with my pencil on. Well, you know, if our vision is bad <laughs> enough, this will actually work out. <laughs> So I'm going to do the same thing. What did you, did okay. you stand up here? Is that what you did? I just rolled the mic. I, 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 I tried really hard to lift it. Like, and I'm, like, I'm trying to look away, and I'm looking at the screen. Right, and right, 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 right. Cover my eyes. Okay, so here's <laughs> roll number one for my attack. And this. You see that? Is that visible? Anyway, now I have to remember what I just rolled. And here's roll number two. Uh, right. Okay, I need to write that down. Okay, so here's roll number one for my defense. Hmm, that's, that's interesting. Oh, now I have to do math. Uh, Wait, got it. why? Isn't it just a straight roll for each of the three? No, you rolled twice. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I only rolled once. Yeah, I thought you were doing it kind of fast. No, you're okay. supposed to do it twice. Why? 
Because that's what the rules say. Oh, but then which one? Do you just pick which one you like better? No, you add them. You add them? Yeah, you take the sum of two oh, percentiles. So you could, it could be that. up to okay. 200. Oh, yeah. oh. Up to 200, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad we figured that out. Uh, okay. Okay. So you should go I'm through gonna, and add. I'm going to roll a second set of three, and then I'm going to do yeah. some math. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Uh, okay, can you guys see this? Probably not. Right, and you were oh, struggling geez. with the addition that I had to do. I know I'm, I'm trying to use the internet to keep, keep us honest, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it and write it down. You guys, somebody later who cares to, to tell whether or not I was cheating can like zoom in the camera. Or something. <laughs> um. So, you know, I do not see any section here on setup or who goes first. All right, I'm just going to, uh, here we go. Here, here's, here's the stats that I've made and my math. Everybody can check me on that and tell me. I don't know, I've made some basic uh, addition problems. I'm going to try and uh, erase my first line here. Okay. And I'll just show my numbers there. Right. There's my numbers I got. Feel free to like, do the counting on what I rolled before. Okay, well, I guess with, with two rolls added together, maybe it's a little less swingy. A little bit. A little more. A little bit. Yeah. They should try like three of some time to type of dice. Okay. Okay. So I see no section on setup. I see right. no section on advanced selection of spells. Cool. I see no rules about who goes first. So I think we should just start playing. And, and since it's since your birthday is coming up, I think you should go first. Okay, great. How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Phase one, you yeah. can transfer points between your ability silos. Okay. Right. So you can transfer. I'm not going to do that because I don't have enough context in which to make such decisions. Great. Okay. Cool. So now uh, comes spell casting. Okay. Uh, spell casting. So I, if I'm reading this right, you can cast one attack spell and one defense spell. Cool. So look at your index of spells. Oh, geez. I guess. Yep. And pick one attack spell that looks interesting. Mm -hmm. And one defense spell that looks interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the middle category, so it's attack at the top, right? Yep, attack. Attack, attack at the top, defense at the bottom, and then these, these attack defense spells in the middle, which I think you can count for either one of those categories. Oh my gosh, I I'm going to have to sift through these chits and find the index of the thing I'm trying Correct. to Correct. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a high action game. Or, <laughs> or, or, you know what? Randomly grab your cup. <laughs> randomly reach into your cup and grab one of each and find out what you get. There's that amazing. possibility. That's kind of amazing. I, I probably won't be doing that. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I kind of want to. Okay. Um, but maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do. Let me do like best of three. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's good. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> okay. 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 How's ruled War of Wizards? Okay. Yep. Yep. Definitely want that one for my attack spell. Cool. Um, and then. Um, Okay, spell, so I'm, I'm trying to fill on this first line of my record sheet. I'm guessing I'm putting the names under A and D of the spells cast. I don't understand why it says hit points. Hit points are entered only where relevant. And then cost, why are the costs all variable, Dan? Well, you get to pick, right? So the attack spell, if, if it's five to 10, you get gotcha. to pick how many points, and that's the points that you spend to cast it, and it's the points of damage that it causes. Great, okay, okay. Basically. Cool. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna pick my best of three here for my defense spell. Uh, I'm gonna hope that some of these are defense spells. Okay, so conveniently, it does look like they're kind of numerically ordered, right? So one through twenty-five are attack spells. Yeah. Twenty-seven through fifty-four. Fifty-four. Okay, not Is quite it? perfect order. Right. Um, our um, our def attack defense, mm -hmm. and it's sixty and higher. So I think 55 and higher. Oh, really? Where's yeah. yeah, okay, 55 is annoyingly. Okay, so I'm going to try and grab three that are 55 and higher. There we go. And I'm going to pick. Uh, that one's okay. 
Yeah, let's do let's do that one. So a defense spell does damage. Like that's also confusing. Uh, a little. I, I, I'm I, I'm guessing that the defense spell counters one of the attack spells by that many points. Is what I'm guessing. Okay. Now, I have the two chits for these. Mm -hmm. uh, Do I do something with them? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna put them on that board. Okay, face right. up or face down or? I face up, I assume. Let's say face up, I presume. Okay. So, so you get to see what I've cast. Yeah. Great. And I think that's, if, if I'm wrong, it's more interesting for the viewers too. So you should say out loud, right? These Great. are words of power that everybody Great. can hear. Great. Uh, I'm oh, uh, My opening salvo is madness. <laughs> <laughs> for how many points? For five points. Got it. And also calm. <laughs> Also have five points. <laughs> that's that's great. That you, you made it thematically <laughs> <laughs> incoherent. <laughs> so do you move them now? So 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 you move them. So, so when you when you when you cast them, do you, do they do they are they just in the first space or do they immediately start moving? Move, most spells move across the board. They are cast advancing towards the opponent by this. Uh, okay, so we're going to assume that they just start off here. And yeah. if spells are already on the board, then they're moving. Then they're moving. That makes okay. sense to me. Do they move at different speeds or do they just go one? Yes. Uh, okay. the, um, uh, the thing on the bottom right of the counter oh, tells you the speed. Oh, jeez. Bottom right. What does it say? No idea. Cannot read it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to do the old man trick here of get on okay. my camera. It's a, so this is this is slow. Yeah. You've, you've put the counter for slow on the board. What? No, it's number six. I thought it was madness. No, it's nine. You had it upside down, Paul. What? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's number nine, which is slow. No, I want madness. Now I'm going to dig. <laughs> now I'm going to dig for number six because I want to cast madness. <laughs> Well, isn't it appropriate that madness caused you to cast the wrong spell? <laughs> I am going to madness chip. That is what I'm casting. Wow, slow. Slow is dumb. Madness is fantastic. I found it. So this is before... So this is... I'll point out, this is before <laughs> the, the invention of the little underline below the six of the nine, so you knew which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, madness. <laughs> okay. Cool. Which also so, I see the paper starting to peel yeah, yeah, there yeah. a little bit, but okay. So, so with madness, the number in the bottom right is one. This is going to yep. move forward by one each time. And I, and I thought at first you were telling me that it was a slow moving spell. I was like, <laughs> okay, this, you know, I guess you somehow Dan knows the range of possible movements of the spell. I cast mass confusion on the yeah, chips. Maybe, uh, this chip is already coming apart, so I'm going to. So have you paid? So reduce. Uh, so reduce your attack and your defense by five each, right? Cool. Well, and, where and do I note that? I presume in round two, I guess. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. I think. That makes sense. Evasion constant. I don't know what that is. Oh, maybe the hit points is to dot. No, that's cost, right? Cost is how much you spent. So, uh, so okay. So we're gonna say you you cast your spells, and now would be the combat phase where spell against spell, if they run into each other. Or physical if you are in personal combat. Now I don't see anything here about moving the wizards. So I don't, I don't think they do move. I think they just stand. So there. how the hell do you get in personal combat? <laughs> it's an excellent question. Maybe with a summoned creature or something. Yeah, summoned creature, or maybe is there a teleport spell? Can you teleport or some crazy thing? You can fly. There's a fly spell. Okay, I'm gonna say it's my turn. Yeah, you okay with it. that? Yeah, yeah. I'm just noting my costs here. Go for it. Okay. So, so each I... round we're just pumping spells onto the board. Yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is feeling a little more straightforward. I like it. I dig it. <laughs> okay. So I so phase phase one. Uh, I think I'm also going to skip the transfer points. You know. <sighs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the transfer points. Okay, so now my spell casting. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit on the board for folks. It's a blank tile. Oh no, that's gotta cut 
this way. So I like your process. I'm also going to grab three of each and then, and then decide. I'm moving the dice up. Do, do the dice come into play at all anymore? Were they just for stat generation? <clears throat> uh, maybe ability, maybe effects of particular spells trigger that? Maybe. Okay. Well, I'm, I've shifted the dice a little out of reach here just to get a better view of the board for everybody. I like this. This is this sounds like a good. <coughs> That's an attack spell. Hmm. Weird. That doesn't sound like an attack spell. Okay. So the bottom left of the chit. Sorry, I'm now I'm not using my old man trick of using my my phone camera to zoom in on the chit. So the the top seems to be the name. The middle is the index. Yeah. The bottom left is the cost. Correct. And the bottom right is movement. Movement. So the cost, I feel like it's just redundant, right? I, it, it's not important information anymore because I've already expended. I've noted how much on my sheet here I spent on it. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Okay, so, um, so Dan is very carefully considering his spell choices here. Yeah. Uh, what the hell is this? So you could do a lot of math in your head here of like, well, I know the speeds of the spells Paul just cast, and I know how many rounds it's going to take for it to reach me. I know what spells are likely to intercept. I'm just going to prepare myself here with some choices for next round. Which, I mean, I'm clearly playing... Uh, folks with the with the very strategic view of whatever spell name amuses me the most uh, so that I mean, probably poor poor strategy here on my part <laughs> okay okay so I am casting for my attack spell I'm casting energy bolt at 15 points Ooh, big money. And for my defensive spell, I'm casting Wall of Fire at 10 points. Okay, so this comes down 15. Bam, bam. Hmm. So I think that's my turn. Interesting. Okay. So on my turn, yes. Uh, I transfer points if I want. Yes. Not, not seeing the need for that. Great. Yeah. Um. Oh, what have I just dropped? A chit. Of course. A chit. One chit. Where did that one? No idea. Okay. Physical guy. movement. Who that can what? Okay. Um, when do they move forward? Before or after I cast new Let's spells? Let's say before, just yeah, to make that, space. That, and, yeah, that makes sense to me. So both of my spells are moving one. Got it. Remember, if there's a range, you get to pick, right? Are they both one? If there's a range, I get to pick. So yeah. Yeah, these are both just one movement, so you don't have a choice. Can I um, can I see the booklet there? Yep. Can I can I see if there's yep. more detail on some of these spells? Um, the whole middle part is particular spell descriptions, kind of in numerical order. Kind of. Yeah. More well, why are the heading numbers three digit numbers? Well, mm. this is a standard war game, right? This is so so you could you could say this is a war game and this is standard war game uh, uh, outline format. We've got uh, section eight and section eight point oh and section eight point oh point seven and that kind of stuff. Jeez. Holy crow. Okay. Okay. Now, when spells of when our spells run into each other, we're going to have to cross reference and see I, if they affect each other. Or yeah, not. that's very cool. Uh, I'm remembering that you said that I was going to need a collection of d6s, right. and I just happened to be reading randomly uh, uh, an entry here that says. Uh, if fired at a creature, this is for the darts spell. If fired at a creature, um, there, 
If I were dead creatures, these must make saving throws. 15 or better on a 20-sided die. Yes. So I guess we need a 20-sided die. <laughs> well, if you look at the last section, it tells you how to use the D10 oh, the D10. plus a D6, right? Ah, 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 I'm brilliant. Use the D10. If brilliant. the D6 is 1 through 3, it's yeah. the lower end. And if it's 4, 5, 6, it's the upper end. Yep. Okay. I'm pretty sure like in the first edition DM's guide, they still have that little comment. Because you still didn't have those, those non-platonic D10s at that point. Or, or they, at least they weren't widely okay. they weren't widely available. So Dan, look at the yep. spell reference table. Yes. Look at the last three attack spells: darts, arrows, and silver bolts. Right. Explain to me their costs because it says attack point costs. For example, darts is one to three each, comma plus one star. And the the star says if poisoned. If poisoned, so I get to choose if they're going to be poisoned? Question mark. I don't know. Oh, Maybe. Gosh. Those, those, so we, we won't have any curing of wounds because those are priests only. Yeah, if poison or bearing a poison weapon. Does it, does it talk about poisoning in the, in the no, description? No, but it, it does say, for example, the arrow spell says uh, one to three arrows may be fired at the opponent or his creatures. Rules are some of those above for number 23. If fired at the opponent, he may use a defensive spell or attempt evasion. Creatures must throw saving throws. Uh, no, I'm misreading. I'm sorry, it's the darts because I was trying to cross-reference darts because, of course, rules for one thing. Oh, no. Cross-reference other oh, rules no. for other things, which is great. Um, these may be fired at the opponent's creatures. They may be fired at the opponent from an invisible bow. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm misreading. I thought I saw something that was claiming that they could be fired from your own creatures as an origin point, but that doesn't make any sense. It's, you know, I wouldn't have passed this game. They may play. also be fired at the opponent's creations. Oh boy. Okay, well, screw it. I'm going to cast the arrow spell because I have it out here. It's one of the chits that came up for me. You know what? I'm just realizing that I'm just realizing this bit on the list here. It says, bold face numerals indicate invisible spells. Others are visible to the opponent. And boy, at least half of them are all bold face. What the heck's an invisible spell? I've got to put the thing upside down or something so you can't see what it is. Let's skip that today. Okay, so for this public game, as we're learn, as we and other people are learning, let's just skip the invisible spell clause. Because I don't know how you would handle that. Wow. Weird. Which might change the texture of the game incredibly, because then if I know exactly what you're casting, yeah. I would know exactly what invisible, the Invisible, just FYI, invisible spells include all forms of unseen forces, madness, cold, a shield of defense, seeing other planes, oh. etc. These are represented by a counter face down with its number hidden. So my madness spell should be hidden. Okay. You know that well, madness is coming at you, but it's right. fine. We're yeah. going gonna, to, for the sake of streaming yeah, yeah. and for the sake of our own sanity... We're going to pretend that all well, spells there's a are lot, for the, This would be a lot of secret stuff. Is you'd have, you'd, you're picking the spell in secret. You're picking the cost of the spell. You're deducting it in secret. I don't know how what your ability scores are, and I don't know what spells are coming at me. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of a lot of trust there. And, yeah. and the, the fact yeah. that the movement is yeah. question mark. Interesting. Okay, Interesting. so I'm, ca I'm casting arrows, which is a visible spell regardless. Yep. Gotcha. Right? Yep. The attack point cost is four to six each. Mm -hmm. Why does... Because... The, and then I'm confused by this because they inflict two to seven points of damage by rolling a d6 and adding one. So what's the difference in the number of points I spend on it? I don't know. Why would I spend more or less points on it? Creatures must throw saving throws... An arrow striking invisible, uh, striking the opponent does the amount of damage invest. An arrow striking the opponent does only the amount of damage invested in it, plus any poison bonus. If the opponent himself is hit by the poison arrow, he must cast neutralize poison spell on himself and as his next defensive move. Wow. Okay, so so if the arrow hits a creature that's been summoned, it does that roll you talked about. But if it hits me, it does what it, what you paid for it. Striking the opponent only does the amount of damage invested in it. Gotcha. Plus any poison bonus. How do I know if they're poison or not? I assume you just pick? Four to six 
points each plus one each if poisoned. There you go. So the most I could spend on this is 21 points. Okay. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm casting arrows at 21 points. Okay. So what is that? That's three arrows at the three maximum Three poisoned each? arrows. Okay. Three maximum poisoned <laughs> arrows. Well. <clears throat> 21 points. Um, and then for my defensive spell... And, and this is just... I'm just like randomly picking. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Why, why would I pick anything here? Who knows? Yeah. Um, I'm going to cast uh, Control of Self because it came up. What's it do? Who knows? Uh, I'm going to chuck five points. In <clears throat> well, I will point... So I can tell from here that Control of Self would counter a number of things. Right? It's a defensive spell and it would counter uh, c Control, which I think is yeah. like a charm. Uh, madness. Gotcha. Counters madness. What did, what did you cast as your attack spell over there? Number 20? Energy Bolt. Energy Bolt. So maybe I want something like... Uh, how fast is Energy Bolt? Which is, which is 20. Let's see. It's a... It's a, it's a uh, one to three. That's confusing. Great. So I get to pick, right? On my turn, I just get to pick. Do I move it one, two, or three spaces? Oh, this game <laughs> is going to make me go fishing for spells. <laughs> but I think I'm going to cast. Cool. Wait, I just saw it. Like, much like Tecumel, it's a little Baroque. Yeah. This, this game is Baroque. <laughs> oh but we're just learning it, right? Yeah. When, maybe when you become experts, it becomes. Oh, I saw a spell that much I was excited more for, and now I've lost it. So now I'm just now I'm just spilling my chits out everywhere. Spilling my chits. Um, I think you're losing your chits. I think is what you. Should... <laughs> Look, I just don't give a chit anymore. <laughs> there's typos. Uh, there's at least one typo on the spell okay. sheet here. I'm gonna irritate me. I can't, what, I can't see what the speed of that thing is because it's so tiny. It's so tiny. Yeah, this is this is rough. Eh. One, thank you. Whatever. I'm casting it. I'm casting spell number sixty-nine. I I'm get, I'm getting the impression. Infernal barrier. I'm getting the impression here, Paul, that that your long distance vision is better and my short distance vision is better. Fascinating. Fascinating. But I'm just I've got my contacts in, which kind of mucks with me. There you go. I'm going to spend 10 points on that. Um, okay, I have cast my spells and noted their costs. Great. And God, God help us. Okay, so I'm going to move. So it's my turn. I won't, I won't transfer points. I'm going to move my stuff forward as much as possible because okay. I want to see, okay. see what happens when they run into you. So I'm going to move my energy bolt three. One, two, so you three. just get to pick the speed? I do. Okay, that's, yeah. that's sweet. In the range, right? Yep. And my firewall, I'm also going to move three. One, two, three. Bam. Okay, so for the new stuff... I'm just digging out some uh, D6s for us here, Dan. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this. This sounds cool. And, uh, here's a bunch of D6s. Okay, all right, okay. So for my attack spell this turn, I'm uh, casting uh, the Hands of Craw the Mighty. Sure. At the, uh, the, 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 the minimal amount of five points. And for my defensive spell, I'm casting Wall of Water to follow up my Wall of Fire. I'm following up the Wall of Water at the maximum amount of 10 points. Kind of decided to add an extra little note in my spells cast. I'm putting all the way on the right edge here. Uh, I don't know if folks can see this. Uh, I just I, I wrote down for my own reference the speed they move, just so I can. Oh, that's good. Huh. Well, there are multiples. I just noticed I have two chits that are both number 47. Yeah, you can cast mul multiples. You can cast multiples, and this is a good. So this is the end of my turn. This is a good point this too. Game. Yeah. The, so there's a rule called the reinforcement rule. Uh -huh. If you have two copies of the same spell, one space behind each other, uh -huh. they they add together. Of course they do. You can't stack up more than that. You can have two stacking, but you yeah. can, but you can't have more than that. 
probably because there's only two copies of any given. Oh, is that right? Spell. Well, it's, it claims that you might have three or four copies on the board, but then really? they're separate. They're separate combinations. Really? Yeah. I don't know how many. I don't know how many chits I popped out. <laughs> I wonder. I wish I had looked at the chits right. more closely before removing them. But this, this is what they are. Okay. So, are you done? I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay, still not really seeing any reason to readjust my points here. Um, you know, maybe once I start taking damage or something, right. maybe that will change my mind about that. I kind of made a pool of chits here in front of myself to look at. It's the, 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 one of the problems here with this game is just the, 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 the huge quantity of choice is just wild. Right, like just it is, it is so yeah. much to choose yeah. from. Holy cow. And if there was some kind of like start with a limited spell book, that would be one thing. But right, I, I right, don't right. see anything like that. Yeah. Should right. we turn on the the overhead light to get more light on this now? Could. Is that, that going to be better? Did that do anything? A little bit. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. A little bit. All right, I'm moving my chits forward. Madness and uh, whatever sixty two was. Can't remember. Calm. Calm. Madness and Calm both going one. Um, my uh, Infernal Barrier going one. And my arrow's going four. Oh, crap. <sighs> okay. Here come arrows. 44, 45. Yeah, yeah. All right, now I'm going to cast some more stuff. Uh, Seven. 70. Let's see. Actually, that light kind of helped me read the chits a little bit. Okay, nice. okay, good. Uh, what is that spell? Oh, I definitely want that spell. With a lot of chits. I wonder how you're supposed to organize these things. I mean, it's blank, it's blank. If, if afterwards we or somebody finds that there's a rule here that says you start with a limited number of spells, I, that, would, that would vastly change the game, but I looked really carefully for that and I couldn't find any place where it said that. Um, I'm excited here that the spell that I'm trying to cast, the... Um, Cost written on the reference table. Oh no! Don't say it. Is different from the cost written on the chip. That's it. Yep, that's exciting. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna look at the rules here right. and see who's right. Looks like the chip is right. So this, this spell has a variable speed, but it may not be reduced in speed. As it speeds up, you what? have to continue to move it at uh, that what? speed. What? How do you track that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Totally. Okay so, I, okay, so on the sheet, right, on the sheet where you cast it, I guess you could have a little mark about what the speed is. That's, that's, I'm head. totally writing the speeds down on my, I, on oh, my really? reference sheet. Okay. I'm absolutely okay. writing that. I did not realize it was that important to do so, but... Um, all right, so I'm casting Doom Kill. God, I, you know what? I just picked that out. <laughs> I just picked that out to cast that. <laughs> I'm going to drop 20 points on that fucker. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. And then, and, and it's still like, the, it, what strikes me as really difficult is picking a defensive spell because I don't know. When, when are things going to hit me? And what yeah. do I need to counter? And, yeah. Holy cow, this is difficult. Um. So I feel, I mean, you know, I'm just realizing the illustration right on the board. So here is this wizard with a giant pile of stuff marching out in front of him. And here's this wizard with a giant pile of stuff marching out. And basically that is the game. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to have a giant. All right. We're going to cast Dispel Magic. Train of stuff. And now I'm regretting not having written down their index number when I wrote the name of the spell. That's a good point. Um, 
so madness is six and calm is I think 62 and arrows is 24 and infernal barrier that is a good point was what 69 I think yep. doom kill is 22 and dispel magic is 68 how many points do I want to drop into my dispel magic like, I'm gonna, I feel like I've been going over the top here, so let's let's rein it in a little. Let's put let's put ten points onto yeah. dispel magic, which is the middle number. Yeah. Um. Okay. My turn. Go for it. Okay, so I uh, just go write the spells. Energy bolt, gold spore three. One, two, three. While a fire goes forward three. One, two, three. Uh, while a water goes forward two. Hands of Craw the Mighty goes forward one. And I previously also picked out Doom Kill. Nice. So I'm casting Doom Kill number 22 at. What'd you cast yours at? Uh, my Doom Kill? 20. Yeah. What, wait, what? I put 20 oh, that's points. the one that's got the typo. That's the one that's got the typo on the chip. No, on the. Um, Somewhere. I right. can't remember. The, this, the reference table. Some, somebody is wrong. The yeah. reference table is wrong. Yeah. Um, so I'm also going to cast it at 20 to match your... match your. I, ma I see your doom kill. Yeah, okay. And for my defensive spell, I'm casting number 45, Wall of Stone. Um, at the maximum of 10. So I currently have three wall spells. It's exciting. Fire, water, I, I, and I wonder stone. what will happen. This is a very slow moving game. It's a little, yeah. <laughs> it's a little. Look at this. We only have 15 minutes left, Dan. You one think, five? Yeah, one five. Are you kidding me? It's nope. quarter of two right it's now. It's quarter of two right now. Oh, man. Do you think our spells will even reach each other by the time this stream let's is see, over? Let's see something happen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, my turn. Yeah. We're, we're, we're speeding up. Really? Hopefully. Um, okay, I'm not. I think I've got Tempest Fugit cast on me. I'm not, um, uh, right, not transferring any points. Um, I'm going to move my arrows forward four. Yeah. I think everybody else marches forward one, one, one. Uh, my wait, eraser wait. wasn't grabbing the uh, I forgot to write the spell of the, the speed of Dispel Magic. What was that? That's 68. It has a speed of unclear. Okay, Dispel Magic is 1 to 2, Doom kills 2 to 3. All right, I'm going to move my Dispel Magic forward now, 2, and I'm going to move Doom Kill forward, 2. I don't want to speed it up yet. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I'm going to cast Sleep. Yeah. Classic. Classic spell there. Great, great. Um, And I'm gonna put, I don't know, I'm just gonna put sleep, 15, it's gonna move a one. Uh, I'm gonna put, I don't know, 10 points on that. So is it Doom Kill is the one that has a velocity you have yeah. to keep track of? Yeah. It's only two or three. Got it. And once it goes to three, that's what it is. Uh, I'm gonna cast Fly, that's my defensive spell. Uh, and that just has a flat cost of 15. Weird. Does it have a speed on the token? Fly? Yeah. Fly three to five, it looks like. Weird. You should read the description that I'm gonna read the description that spell. I like what does what the hell is fly gonna do? Mm. Gonna make me fly, of course. I'm just going to, I'm going to look that up. 52. Uh, the spell can be used offensively or defensively on oneself. Did you use that as an attack or defense? Defense. On your, in yourself or in a group of creatures in order to attack or evade. Or evade. It carries a flyer beyond the reach of all creatures except the demon. Adds plus one to evasion saving throws. It does render him more vulnerable to missiles.
Okay. So I think you got to I think you got to decide did you use it on yourself or are you using it to reinforce a group of creatures? Well, I don't have any creatures out there, so okay. it's obviously on myself. Okay. So So I don't think you put it to Wait, saying it doesn't go on the board? I'm, it does it seems like it doesn't make sense to me. This whole game doesn't make sense to me. This spell by itself has no <laughs> movement factor. It is only operative when applied to the player or a group of his creatures. It allows for travel at 20 squares per usage. The player can fly towards the opponent or away from him. <laughs> what? Creatures can <laughs> only fly towards the opponent. Great. So I'm just going to fly right over there and stab you with my dagger? Is that what that was happening? <laughs> I, I guess that's an odd. I, I, I think you, I. I mean, you would be next to me, right? You would be. You would be in. You could be in space twenty at your option right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And what is M? That's movement. And does it last? Does it stick around? Is it just a one-off? thing? I think it's a one-off thing. Okay. It's only operative. It allows for twenty. It allows for travel at twenty squares per usage. Did it random? What do you want from me? I, I felt that this would be different. Oh, for crying out loud. I felt this would be different. I mean, feel free to pick a different spell. Whatever you think is best at this time. Uh, I mean, I don't know what would happen if I launched myself over there. I mean, I'd probably intersect with a bunch of your spells, which sounds pretty terrible. I'm assuming that you would, you know, jump over whatever you want to jump over. I'm assuming. But, I mean, like, if I just move myself so that I was in your row yeah. one there, yeah. row 20, yeah. like, I'm now in the same space as a bunch of spells. That's true. Right. Yeah. Likewise, if I jump forward to, I don't know, row four, yeah. then I'm gonna, next round I'm going to get smacked by this correct. incoming spell. That's right. correct. Right. So, like, I don't see any reason why flying closer to you is good for me at this point. Got it. Um, so, fine. I'll find a different spell, I guess. I'm not very excited about it this. It permits the user or his creatures to fly over such obstacles as pits, chasms, walls, etc. Pits, chasms, and walls? How do these things exist? Well, I've cast all wall spells for my defenses. Cool. Right. Walls are in quotes. Clearly the spell thing. Yeah, what, what are pits and chasms, though? Yeah, I don't know. When used by the sender upon himself, he moves at a flying speed... I feel, I mean, call me crazy, but I feel like this language here is kind of a little bit of a mishmash between D&D &D and this game, mm. right? I feel like you've got, I think you've got some chocolate in my peanut butter. Yeah, or some toothpaste in your peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A flying player or group of his creatures can be hit by missiles or the demon or the energy bolt or doom kill. I don't know. I don't know how that spell's supposed to work. Cool. Well, I'm switching it. It's now a okay. spell. Okay. That sounds good. So I'm still just going to leave the cost at 15 because I don't feel like doing more math. Wacky. Uh, the, my turn? Sure. Okay, so what I picked out here was I uh, move things as much as I can. So one, two, three, one, two, three, what is that? Two, one, two, one, one. Uh, I'll move my doom kill at three. One, two, three. All right, can't go back. Can't go back. That's fine. So then I'm casting, uh, for an attack spell, I'm casting fear mm -hmm. at the maximum of five. Mm hmm. It's number five. And I'm ca and for defense, I'm casting my next wall spells, Wall of Tangle Vines. Jeez, you and your walls. You got it. For the maximum of ten. Interesting. Spell 66 is Dispel Magic, whereas spell 68 is Dispel Magic. They appear to be different, though, because they have different costs. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they have different defend against. <laughs> I think they, they might do. be they might be specialized against oh, particular spells. Of course they do. Oh, 66. Okay, now in the book, 66 is dispel evil. Oh. 
the spell evil, Interesting. which is useful against certain types of magical attacks like Apparition Sphere, Paralysis, and the Silver Halo of Soul Stealing, whereas 68 is your Dispel Magic, and it's useful against only two potent attack spells, specifically Mind Bar and Petrifaction. All right. Is it my turn? Yeah. So here we go. My arrows are moving forward. Are they gonna inter are they gonna hit your twenty and forty three? Okay, so arrows are I believe not. They only they that's not on the list of things they interact with. Okay. Then they're gonna move all the way up there. Twenty and forty three. Yeah. Speeding up my doom kill. Let's go into three now. Holy smoke. <laughs> this 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 game is way too complicated. <laughs> this game is uh, pretty complicated. All right, Dan. Too complicated for a stream. <laughs> for for an unboxing stream, I'll say that. I would cast another spell, but we have five minutes left. Any final thoughts on War of Wizards? <laughs> Let's get one interaction in. Can we get one interaction in? I don't like, know what? if we can. Okay. I don't know what spells interact with each other. Okay. So it's, so your arrows are going to hit my wall of stone. Okay. Your arrows cool. are going to hit my wall of stone, which I intentionally cast because it defends against it. So let's just see what happens. Sure. Let's just resolve what okay. happens when arrows sure. hit wall sure. of stone. Sure. So... Um, stone. So, so, wall of solid rock sent rumbling towards the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, it blocks other wall spells. Uh, it blocks. It, it looks like it blocks missiles, which I, which I'm, which I believe arrows are in that category. Sounds likely. Which are automatically shattered. Okay. Cool. So my arrows shatter against your wall of stone. I believe so. That's disappointing. <laughs> So arrows defend 45, which is wall of stone. Yeah, I think, question mark? Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> we punched a ton of chits. Uh, yeah. We've done a lot of math and paperwork yeah. work for yeah. nothing happens. Yeah. Or. So <laughs> on, when I looked this up on Board Game Geek, right, yeah. They, yeah. The, the claim was that the average playtime was 60 minutes. That's insane. I don't understand how you could That's possibly insane. play this in 60 minutes. Yeah. Right? No. And it, and it also rated it as a fairly simple game at 1.5 out of a 5-point scale. Not, this is anything but simple. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. I mean, the, the core mechanics are pretty straightforward. Yeah. But the, the huge array of things you're yeah. trying to keep in your head and contemplate, like, yeah. wow, wow, this is rough. Yeah. I guess um, we don't have it on camera right now, but I have this giant pile of yellow tiles on my yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, likewise. Yeah, that I'm you... scraping through trying to figure out what would be useful. Plus, the uh, we didn't even engage with the, the fact that half the spells are invisible. <laughs> and you, you, you don't know don't what's know. Be, what's coming at you. Wild, wild. And I feel, I mean, I could be crazy, but at first glance, the, the rules in 1974, 1975 style seem like they could possibly use editing um there's a lot of there's a lot of cross-referencing it looks like there's kind of unclarity uh yeah. in places and um so like i don't know like if you cast an invisible spell i'm not sure at what point we determine whether my defense interacts like do you look it up do you reveal it to uh, me how yeah. do we oh how goodness. do we know which one it is and yeah, we didn't even get to the tables of uh, interactions or saving throws or creatures or stuff like that. So this would be this would be more than one hour, for sure. My, the information I got previously was that you could play this in, in an hour, and, and my takeaway thought is no, it takes more than an hour. Right now, that said, there is a style of play that I could see that this would be very conducive to, which is you generally don't see anymore these days. Which is, you own a copy, I own a copy. We have them set up oh. independently yeah. on our table, and we play by mail or yeah. whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have lots of time to, mm, oh, yeah. I see, and there's an invisible spell here, and I know the spell's here, and you can really cogitate over yeah. what's going on and make very careful choices. 
write in your things, mail yep. them. Yep. Right. That yep. this would work very well, which I understand like a lot of Avalon Hill games were played that way. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and um, I guess the the review in White Dwarf number eight that said you could you could it would be a good play game to play through the evening. I guess if you I don't know I'm get just as a guess four or five hours maybe yeah. three four or five hours maybe that would I guess I could I could see that. So kind of an interesting kind of like mishmash of clearly stuff that's obviously coming out of original D and D. Yeah. And then an attempt to turn this into a war game, which actually is very close to my heart. Like I actually want to do the same thing myself. But uh, boy, have I gotten like have I gotten loose in my late years? That this seems this seems heavyweight to me. And there's a lot, just so many questions. You yeah. have to play this, I think, a yeah. lot of times to really yeah. iron out the like. Do the wizards move? I mean, clearly they do. If Fly is allowed to move the wizards, so we're gonna see the wizards popping back. And think forth. about this. Think about this. Yeah. What if there was like a basic game? What if the spells were leveled? They're not leveled here, and like the first time you play. You only get there's five spells yeah, in your repertoire, yeah, yeah, right? Would, and you you get to learn that. And at yeah. some point, you play level two wizards, and now you add more spells to it. Yeah. But I don't see anything like that in the rules here. No. I don't see any limitation of the setup. Uh, but maybe you could you could start with a subset and just start learning like a half a dozen spells yeah. and how they yeah. work. Yeah, I, that would be preferable. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some some scaling in there would be nice. Yeah. Um, all right, so the big, the, the, the funny thing, the, the one little piece of strategy I was implementing, yeah. Dan, is I was pouring as many points into my tax spells as I possibly could. Uh, I did roll a 99 on my first okay. attack point okay. pool. Okay. And I was like, what were, you, what were your yeah. starting abilities? What was I your had attack? 168 attack, yeah. 121 defense, and 82 physical. Got it. I had I I feel like I had pretty good rolls for yeah. my defense, so I had one twenty four attack, one sixty nine defense, wow. and eighty seven physical, which yeah. I thought was pretty low. Yeah. Well, interestingly, you know, we're kind of on par with each other physically, yeah. and whereas I had more way more attack points, you yeah. had way more defense yeah. points. So likewise, I was pumped. I maxed out all my defense spells. All your defense spells. Right. Well, that's interesting. So we're probably see a lot of things like my yeah. arrows all exploding yeah. on your walls of stone. Probably so. Probably so. Great. Interesting. All right. Well. Also kind of has a little feel of like the psionics from Advanced D&D, &D, a mm. percentile, and there's an attack uh, pool, and there's a defense pool, actually, kind of looks like that. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap things up here, yeah. folks. Thank you for joining us today on uh, this uh, long birthday weekend. Um, Paul, thanks again for unwrapping this with me. I, that was it's, fun. it's something that I've been that. enticed by. It's actually a subject that I'm that I'm interested in. I again, thank you so much for breaking it out. Yeah, to, to my, take pleasure, a look at my pleasure. Yeah. Folks, if you have any experience with War of Wizards uh, and want to comment in our video, I'm sure we would appreciate you know, pointing out where we're screwing it up, or um, especially if you have thoughts about like wh you know where's the fun in this game, what is the style of play that that we're missing here. Um, is it is it just that like. I, my gut tells me that the style of play has just radically changed from 1975. That the way people play games has changed, and so uh, it just doesn't doesn't really translate very well anymore. But um, drop us a comment in the YouTube video. Uh, let us know your thoughts, and uh, maybe we'll come back and rethink War of Wizards. Yeah, and if you have uh, uh, thoughts about house rules, like maybe you've modified War of Wizards in, in ways that uh, make it satisfying you, to you, we'd like to see that. Uh, again, if you're new to the channel here, I um, hope you're having a good uh, Independence Day weekend. And uh, we, you can follow us. We're on a number of social media as The Wandering DMs. We're on Facebook and Twitter and Twitch and GitHub and TikTok. And uh, it's Wandering DMs on all those sites, so look for us there, and you'll see updates for upcoming shows. If you prefer to listen to our show in audio-only podcast format, this show is not going to work so well. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but you can find our podcast on our website at wanderingdms.com and through various carriers uh, such as uh, Google Podcast and iTunes and um, Spotify and Pandora. Um, but not Stitcher anymore because that's going away. So sorry, Stitcher users. Apparently, I got an email that said they're shutting down. So oh. it's time to switch. Uh, personally, I use Podcast Addict myself for oh, podcasts. Yeah, really? So recommend that one. Um, yep. Uh, so so uh, yeah, you can uh, find. I've now lost track of what I was saying. <laughs> Something about where you can find our podcast. Yeah, you can find our podcast. Oh, and if the um, if you are listening to this show right now on one of those third party podcast carriers, and it gives you the ability to do so, please rate and review our show. 
that helps other users of that site find our show, and we really appreciate it. We really do. And uh, big thanks to our patrons who support the show and allow us to get interesting artifacts like this. And if you're in a position where you'd like to join them, please go to patreon.com slash wanderingdams and you'll see our couple of different tiers. We love having people on our Discord server. Every single one of our tiers uh, gets you access to that. Uh, we're actually not gonna have our um, normal after chat uh, today because we have another event coming up right now that people are about to storm in on those doors over there. Um, uh, but uh, we will be back next weekend uh, for another show and our video after chat. And we'll be checking in on Discord for the discussion. I'll personally be back Thursday, 8.30 p.m. for more Book of War Gaming with Dan Cullinan. We're going to take one of our viewer requests. I'm going to take uh, an army of all mundane, normal men. And Dan is going to take an army where he gets to use any of the fantasy types. And I don't know what he's coming with. Could be orcs, goblins, giants, elves. I don't know. And we'll see how well that matches up in Book of War. I think that's a great thing to test. And we'll be doing that uh, this Thursday. So look forward to that. Great. And uh, yeah, then he, that's, that's what's happening. Hope you're having a great Independence Day weekend. Uh, take care this weekend and um, uh, join us next week for, please, another thought-provoking discussion. We'll see you then.